that's it for our look at um, designing our filters using lumped components. So now let's look in to the design of uh, filters using distributed networks or microstrip lines. So I'm going to give a, a, a brief overview of um, the design techniques for microstrip filters. Um, I'm not going to dive as deep into it as I did for the um, for the lumped component uh, design approach. Um, I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, it's section 5.3 of the text. Um, I'm just going to kind of gloss over some of the details here. Okay. In this section of the text, there's uh, there's kind of two examples. Uh, he calls them projects, project one and project two. So we're looking at project two right now, and it is the design of a maximally flat 2.5 gigahertz uh, band stop microstrip filter. Okay, so like I said uh, at the beginning of the lecture, our first step is to come up with a low pass filter prototype. So we want a maximally flat Butterworth filter, and um, and Lud Ludwig starts with a third order filter like this. So this is a little bit different than what we've seen so far, uh, where we have this uh, T network here. Okay, so the the design steps are are still the same. We begin with our filter prototype, and then the next step is to perform a series of impedance transformations. So the impedance transformations that we're that we're going to use is called the Richard transformation, and um, we're going to insert something that's uh, you know called uh, unit elements. Really, what that what that means is just a, uh, a two port network that's describing that's describing a, a microstrip, and the microstrip is defined by A B C D parameters. I know we didn't talk about that in this course. That's why I don't really want to uh, dive too deep into this, um, but uh, and then finally, the final set of transformations that are going to take place are um, by using what's known as uh, Kuroda's identities, which are shown in this table down here. So I'll explain that a little bit kind of as we go here. So the first thing we do in order to convert the, uh, the lumped components into, um, into microstrip lines, we use the Richards transformation over here. Um, and we convert the inductors into short-circuited series transmission lines and then the capacitors are converted into open circuit stub uh, open circuit stubs the next thing we do is we insert these little sections of transmission lines here the transition transmission lines have a uh, a normalized characteristic impedance Z sub UE Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to convert these short-circuited uh, series transmission lines, which don't really make a lot of sense uh, physically. We're trying to convert them into open-circuited uh, stubs. Okay, so the way that we do that is we insert these little sections of transmission lines with uh, normalized characteristic impedance, and then we use Karuda's identities, uh, you know, that are shown in this table here. And basically what that does is it scales the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, uh, the, the, little, the little transmission line segments, they kind of uh, move around the circuit. Uh, basically, whenever you see this little unit element moving around the circuit, like think of like it's literally like a little piece of a transmission line with a certain characteristic impedance. Okay, this, this entire design approach is based on uh, figuring out the characteristic impedances of all of these different stubs and all these little uh, sections of transmission lines. Okay, so a lot of the times we're we're designing you know 50 ohm microstrip lines. In this case, we are not uh, interested in 50 ohm microstrip lines. We are interested in uh, microstrip lines that mimic these capacitors and uh, inductors in our in our filter prototypes. Okay, so let me just show you a, a quick example, kind of how. Uh, this unit element here in combination with this uh, series inductor, which is represented by a, a series short-circuited transmission line, how it gets transformed into uh, the combination of this stub here and this element here. Okay, so that's going to be using the first uh, Kuroda's identity here. You can see that when you have a unit element next to a series inductor, 
then the that is exactly equivalent to having a uh, capacitor on the left hand side of the of the transmission line and uh, you know uh, a neighboring transmission line segment uh, with a completely different characteristic impedance okay so you can see that the uh, the admittance of this capacitor is defined by S over Z2, and the characteristic impedance of this of this transmission line here is defined by Z1. And there's the 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 Z2 and the Z1s; they're all related here. And it tells you how to uh, you know how to transform the uh, the characteristic impedances. So let me just stress that these little unit elements here these represent transmission lines. This is a two-port network that is defined by a matrix that re relates the um, the input voltages, the input voltage and current, to the output voltage and current. And the output current has a, a negative sign here because uh, we could see for a transmission line that the um, you know by convention we draw the arrow for the output current. Uh, towards the, uh, the you know port 2 of our two-port network here, but you can see that um, it's actually in the opposite direction. If we assume that our current is flowing into the port 1, then it's going to be flowing out of uh, port 2, specifically for a uh, transmission line. So anyway, I mean, I don't want to get into this too much, um, but basically, you know, if, if you wanted to determine, if you wanted to determine A, for example, uh, you would want I2 to equal 0, so you would have a times B2, and then you would have minus B I2. And if you set I2 equal to zero, that term will disappear, and you'll have A equals V1 over V2. And then using what we know about uh, transmission line theory, we know that if we define uh, this as being zero, we move along the transmission line in, in this direction. We know that the voltage somewhere along that transmission line uh, as a function of D is going to equal something like this okay and if we plug in uh, you know up here in this equation here for V1 let's just say we're at point D we would have this uh, and then for V2 that's right where D equals 0 so if we plug in D equals 0 here uh, the cosine term here goes to 1 and we just end up with uh, this guy here so those two cancel. So we, we've just kind of showed that the A term here in this ABCD matrix for uh, the unit element, which is a microstrip line, is just simply equal to this. Um, so how do they go from an A equal to a cosine equal to A equals 1 here? Well, you can see that this whole matrix is being uh, multiplied by this term 1 over the square root of 1 minus S squared. So if you plug in the S equals to the tangent of this guy here, you know, the, uh, the Richards transformation, if you plug that in, then uh, it will be equal to uh, cosine of uh, beta times D. Okay, and you can repeat the process for all the, the B, C, uh, and D terms here, and you can convince yourself that this is the uh, ABC matrix for a uh, uh, microstrip uh, line defined by a two-port network. Okay, so I, don't, I didn't want to get into that uh, too much. I didn't even, I wasn't planning on uh, mentioning that at all. That's kind of uh, a little bit more detail uh, than I was uh, expecting to give, but um, I don't know. There now you know, and it's all in the textbook, and you can, and you can read it, read it all there. Okay, so after you make a series of uh, transformations using Kuroda's uh, identities and uh, you know unit elements, um, basically you you end up at this point here, uh, where you have um, a bunch of open circuited stubs separated by. Uh, microstrip lines that are defined by these unit elements, and the, these unit elements have the char these uh, characteristic impedances, uh, you know, 1.4142, and those are uh, the result of uh, performing a bunch of these uh, uh, scaling using Crota's identities. So in the end, you end up with something that looks like this. Okay. After you uh, scale everything to 50 ohms, you take you multiply each one of these terms by 50 ohms. So uh, your source resistance will equal 50 ohms. Your load resistance will equal 50 ohms, and then all of these terms here uh, are multiplied by 50 ohms, and you end up with all of these different uh, characteristic impedance values. Okay, um, I didn't mention one thing. Um, 
So the lengths, that's a, a very important uh, point in this design. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of different approaches. So the lengths are defined here. So for this particular example, uh, a quarter of a wavelength was used uh, in all these transformations. Um, but lambda over 8 is also sometimes used as well. Okay, so so we know the lengths and we know the characteristic impedances. So we basically have everything we need in order to uh, 